Hi guys and welcome back to Cinders. Now I have the difficult decision of deciding whether to go into town or to go to the forest. I don't really see what the forest will gain if we've got all the information from the town for now. Um, so let's go to the forest, let's just see, let's just see what will happen. Um, I assume that the Vagabond might be there. Oh don't, don't, don't do that scary loading symbol. There we go. Away from the house again. I can't help but feel invigorated and excited each time I walk up this road. Alone, without anyone telling me what to do, that's how freedom feels. Though today is a bit different. I know why I came here. That dream I had two days ago. I hadn't have. I didn't hadn't had for her. I didn't. I hadn't have the time. Doesn't make sense. And then my words couldn't come out. The time to come here yesterday, but I know I must do it. Maybe it's a bit silly, but I won't rest until I find out if it was a dream or something else. The lake is as beautiful as I remember it, though I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed. I guess I was really hoping that somebody would be waiting here for me. Well, the voice in the dream asked me to bring a gift, and that's what my father would do too. Leave a gift. Let's be honest, I came here because of that dream, I might as well have the gift like I intended to. I'll gather up some wildflowers and wrap them in my shawl. A beautiful bouquet will be a nice gift. Yes. I'll just place it by the street. Hmm. Nothing's happening. Well, I don't suppose I was expecting anything anyway. It must have been just a dream. In the end, real life is nothing more exciting than dreams and fairy tales. Is more? Wait, what? For instance, this place is so tranquil and beautiful. Even if it's not magical, I feel so at peace. I just want to lie down in the grass, close my eyes, and let my problems drift away. Actually, that sounds like a good idea right about now. This is my day to do what I please, but if I want to take a nap, I will. This looks like a good spot. I'll just lie down here. Hmm. That's strange. Everything's so quiet. The wind is picking up so suddenly. Cinders. Did the wind just call my name? Who's there? No one's there. I suppose it was just the wind playing tricks on me. Creepy. We are not wind. And who are you? Who am I speaking with? You are speaking with us, naturally. But I don't see anyone. How can you not see us when we are everywhere around you? I don't understand. How do you even know my name? We know you because you left gifts for us, just as your mother and father before you did. Surely, you wait, surely you know us. You would not leave us gifts if you did not know we would take them. So, you're fairies. Am I dreaming? Right now, you tread the delicate line between sleep and wakefulness. Soon you will be fully asleep. Makes sense, I guess. But what do you want from me? We have no desire for anything from you. You're the one who seeks our aid, are you not? I suppose so. Do I get a wish or something? If it's the right wish, then yes. Then I wish for... The time is not yet right for me. Do not worry. When the moment comes, you'll know, and the lake owes you a favour. I'm not sure I understand. I get a wish, but only when you say it's okay. That's a bit convoluted. It would if you were awake, but here, in between wakefulness and dreams, it is as it should be. You are leaving now, but we will meet again. Wait, I'm leaving? Where? What do you mean? Into the world of sleep. Goodness, I must have dozed off. No wonder the atmosphere here is so relaxing, it's hard not to sleep. Does this mean the voice of fairies is just a dream? Well, even the fairies themselves admitted that I was dreaming. Can a dream know it's just a dream? But it felt real enough, and the gifts I left have disappeared. Uh, what am I saying? I'm just looking for reasons to believe. This place is magical enough in its own without having to attribute it to the supernatural. Besides, dreams always have to feel real when you dream them. I think I've been reading too many fairy tales. I feel good though. It's sort of a nice revelation actually. It's a nice feeling to be in control of your own destiny instead of believing it's some magical creatures. I better get going though. There's still a lot to do. I just have half a chance to come and take another nap here someday. 
Right, my only choice now is town. Do, 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 do. Music is nice. Another day of freedom I can spend on the town. There's always something going on here. Even now I see some commotion on the streets. I wonder what it is about. The moment I saw my cow die, I knew it. It was one of those evil beads of yours that did it. What are you talking about, woman? My poor mommy has died and she was in so much pain for days. She moved like she'd never moved before. It was almost like moaning or crying. I don't know why she's having this voice. It was your fault. I've seen the bad omens. My poor Molly moaning at the odour her wretched body made. It must have been your curse, witch. Cows smell on their own. And your Molly didn't need my help on that department. You may not have noticed, because you only bathe occasionally. My poor Molly is dead. A lifeless clump of mud in the street. And the heartless witch that you are dare to jest about it. I knew it was your doing, you wretched. I'm laughing because there is little else to do. How else should I react to your stupidity? Do you want someone to blame? I told you to come to me so I could take a look at your bloody cow and heal it. But did you listen? No. The animal's pain was not enough reason to spare a few coins. But I did bring her to you. When it was terminal, before that you said, it is for our fate to decide what happens. So when it's your responsibility, you leave it to fate. And who would have guessed? It didn't work out so well. But you said the cow would die, and she did. That's because she's smart, and she could see it would die if you didn't take care of it. <laughs> but you certainly won't take care of it. The damn cow was seriously ill, and you could see that for yourself. You only came to me when it wouldn't move anymore. That was when you finally realised that trusting to fate isn't effective. Well, too late. You're just searching for someone else to take your blame. Your Molly died because of your stupidity. But she didn't die till you looked at her, you witch. This old town knows that you're bad news and you're not welcome here. Shut up or else I will turn you into a frog or a cow to compensate for your loss. What's going on here? Oh good captain. Hey, I'm getting mixed up with my voices. Please arrest this witch for killing my poor Molly with her evil eye and devilish speed. She has... Molly? My poor cow. She was so kind and helpful and... Is there any truth to what she accuses you of? I'm not even going to dignify that foolishness with an answer. If this idiot doesn't want to take responsibility for her own actions, fine. But leave me out of this. Alright then, my dear lady, I'm going to have to ask you to go home and wait till I sort this out. But I will make it my responsibility to sort this out. And please go home and do not pursue this matter on your own. Do you understand me? Yes, I do. Fine. I apologise for this woman's behaviour and I hope you have not been bothered by this. You know how the townspeople are when they feel hurt or helpless. Oh, I do now. They blame the wicked witch, sometimes for the help of pitchers and... T wait, torches and pitchforks. I hope, however, that you realise that you are welcome here. These are good people. They just get carried away sometimes. However, they are going to expect you to always be able to bail them out of their problems. For generations they did that. And all of the old noble professions, yours is still neat, and of all, yours is still neat. Does that mean you're a prostitute? Prostitution always happens. Oh yes, I'm so needed that you had to intervene. How many times has it been now? They're blaming me for their own stupidity. This town is a strange way of showing appreciation. It might be time to move on now. Now surely you don't mean that. Just yesterday this young woman told everyone at the inn how much you've helped her and... Sure, a great lady no one listens to one day. Insults blaming pitchforks next. That seems to be a good cue to leave. You have reasons to be angry. Good reasons. Oh, just give me some time, please. I just need to think. Someone in this town should, anyway. Fine, I consider the matter settled. And you will do as you see fit, like you always do. Until next time, madame. Good day, Cinders. I did not notice you standing there. Good day to you too, Captain. May I inquire what's going on? Just another day in the town, as usual. Nothing out of the ordinary. Sure, let's attack the witch, as usual. Exactly my point. That is not what I meant. I meant there is no danger, so you do not need to worry, Cinders. Everything will be fine. I am slightly in love with you and therefore feel the need to comfort you constantly. Don't you have some robbers to kill or at least vagabonds to hold down by the ear? Or did picking up girls just become a priority for the town's watch? I have been in many battles and I have stood my ground, because I am showing off. But when a lady as decisive as Madame Geeds gets her temper up, there is no shame in retreat. Because I am scared and I needed to explain that I am leaving and that it's okay for my own manlyhood. So please excuse me, Cinders. I shall bid you ladies farewell. I will stay in the inn for a while if you feel like talking. Oh, no need to apologise. Farewell, Captain. What happened here, exactly? 
People are strange here, logical and stupid. They just sit and demand, do nothing and hope, morons. The time has come for me to change the scenery. What did they do? Oh, nothing spectacular, just more of the usual. People come to me for medicine, for advice, for a solution to every stupid problem that they have created. They still fear me though, and every time something goes wrong, they blame me. They used to blame the devil or evil forces, now the evil forces are next door, ready to those morons to blame. Surely the townsfolk did not mean that. They seem to respect you a lot. There is a very thin line between respect and fear, and that happens in every single town I travel to. However, it takes time for the resentment to build up, so a new town should be more friendly. But you have friends here. Just a second ago, I thought you were speaking with the captain on very familiar and almost friendly terms. Oh, we do have some history together, but do not let me bore you with the details. Oh, go ahead, please. Your curiosity is commendable. But let's discuss something more important. Have you given any thought to our last conversation? Not yet. I haven't had the time to. Good. That means I don't have to give any more advice right now. So take your sign and come to me when you have decided. And don't wait too long, because I intend to leave this damn town soon, and I will not look back. Thank you. I will take time to consider and decide soon. You do that. Goodbye, child. Goodbye. That woman really got to her. Who would have thought? Tough, cynical Madame Guide, whose wrath can move mountains, touched by a simple townswoman's remark. I'll have to consider that side of her, vulnerable and so human. She is human, you know. But right now, I have a whole day of freedom plans to plan as I will. What shall I do? Maybe, maybe pay to buy us a visit again? Hmm. I could also spend time in the tavern, chat on the townspeople, making friends and hearing all the gossip. That is where the life of the town concentrates. And the captain said he was heading there. Speaking to him proved to be worthwhile so far. Worthwhile was far wrong. Choices, choices. Watch out, Cinders, or you might get used to it. I'm going to go see Tobias. What's I'm going to do? Tobias is certain of the visit, especially as Kamosa is getting back tomorrow, and it might be hard to see each other again. That is true. Well, hello there, Mr. Merchant. Hello, Cinders. What brings you to my humble establishment? Oh, I was just around town again. I thought it'd be nice to drop by. No special reason. I see you're well enjoying your newly found freedom. I can't deny it. So, how was your day? I'm glad you've asked. Something strange happened that I needed to talk about. That, or I'll start wondering if I dreamt it. Oh, did you win the Royal, royal Lottery? Just as improbable. Urgh! Finger. I actually had a conversation with Gloria. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that it? The unreal thing that you talked with your sister? <laughs> I presume it was something more than just a simple exchange of insults. To be honest, I'm not sure what it was myself, but it was different. We were both speaking, and I think this time she was listening. She also said I'm free to do what I wish today. Now that's just awkward. Would you like to get some herbs? I'm sure she must be ill. I'm serious, Tobias. It may seem like nothing to you, but believe me, those little things are probably just ordinary in lots of in normal families. But they don't happen in our house. Maybe she sees and understands more than you'd like to give her credit for? With all the blindness that comes from her resentment towards you, she'd have to be a complete fool to realise to realize she cannot control you indefinitely. It sounds manipulative and complex, so there's a large chance that it's exactly what made her, or Kamosa, give me the day off. So there's the slight chance of Gloria just being able to be nice to her sister for a change. The slight chance of her. Do you think that's even possible? Oi, boss sir, you wouldn't happen to have a new task for your old mate now, would you? Gold as Abbott running from me pockets like cats and heat. And your last payment... Oh, bollocks. You? The pretty bird. No, this isn't a friendly get... No, isn't this a friendly get-together? If I'm the bird, then what does that make you? You certainly have a way of peering out the blue anywhere I go. First in the woods, then my own house. And now here, you must be the most popular person in the whole kingdom. In any case, you came just in time to answer my questions and answer them fully. And candidly. Such terrible words from that pretty mouth. Frankly, Cinders, I'm curious as well. A bit uneasy, but mostly curious. Oh, it's all very simple, really. Two days ago, you came to our home to talk with Camosa. I want to know what it was about. But I've told you, it's nothing big, lassie. Rumors are me trade, rumors are me trade, so keep your petticoat on. So that was a little gossip for little coin. If you mean the one about the royal ball, then some small news it is. I can only imagine what's going on in all the noble houses with unwed daughters right now. He's surprisingly bad at lying. Room is worth as much of what people are willing to pay for it. And I'm sure it costs poor Camosa dearly. 
Poor she may be, but she only knows how to ha she knows how to haggle that one. She has ears of her own too. She learned about the bowl soon enough. She'd learn. The folks are buzzing like busy bees about nothing else. Which is exactly why you're so bad at lying. Why would come to pay a man for you like second hand news which is no news at all is yeah. Actually, knowing she'd be interested in the first place, say you've never told you never told how exactly did you meet Lady Cummo, so the phrasing in this is just twisty sometimes. Gosses me trade and devil take me from giving anything for free, cause some lassie found her out her lashes. That's all, um, trade secret. Am I right, boss, sir? She does have a point here. Any question certainly piqued my curiosity. I reckon the little bird peek picked something all right. Oh, tell her. Nasty business, mate. It's a nasty ambush. Me thinks I'll just run for the door now and call it a day. It's been swell talking. Not a step. As a law-abiding subject of the prince of our prince, I'm obliged to report any crime or mischief I know of to the captain and his guard. And I'm sure Pearl will be happy to get something solid on you. But suspicious behaviour and conspiracy will have to do. I'm sure it's enough to grant you a lovely night in the dungeon. I can't believe you snitching your old mate, boss, sir. It's business. Nothing personal, friend. Fine, I'll tell you. But only the Missy here will hear it. Bloody hell, some demon speaks through those red lips. You must take me for a complete fool if you think I'd let it go alone with you so you can flee. It's alright, Tobias. He won't run, will you, boss? He knows that it would force me to inform the captain whom I just saw moments ago right outside the store. Y yes, Missy. Anything you say. Very well. See, I knew we'd come in agreement sooner or later. Would you like to step outside and tell me everything, my friend? Yes, Missy. Lead on. Are you sure about this, Cinders? Don't worry, we're all friends here after all. So it was. Oh, it's about him also trying to find a wife. Let's stop here and talk. Not exactly a hiding place, middle of town, air love. Sure, I could use some more privacy. I'm not going to give you a chance to escape now, and don't try anything stupid. The captain's right on the other side of the street, remember that. Fine, you little devil. I'll tell you what I know. Just don't yell if I can't remember all the details. I have a short memory. You've heard my question already. What was the message you brought to Carmosa? A dashing young gentleman like yourself, you should have no trouble recalling the last few days. Blaze now, lassie. You and your eyes tongue. I don't know what I'm doing with this voice. I, I remember. So I was out in the woods, resting my head against the ground, enjoying the peace and quiet that only nature can bring. Calm, shimmer of the lake, away from the wickedness. <laughs> don't digress. Of the city, sleeping like a brat I was. Do you often sleep outdoors? Why were you sleeping by the lake? Now that is a mighty good question, in it, love? Can't say I know the answer, though. Just woke up there. All the magic place in the pond in the woods. My auntie used to tell me stories of... Get back to the topic, will you? I'm on it. I woke up and heard voices. Thought it was just like my auntie's stories. Of the fair folk, you know? Made of light and wisp. Prettier than the finest ladies they are. But they were no wisps. And? What happened then? I hid. What else? Dead still upon this neck, because it knows when it's time to jump in the bushes. You know what I mean? Who are those people? Ah, an excellent question, Birdie. You get tells me you'll love this. It was the noble Captain Peralt, and he was talking to the Prince. The Prince was talking to Peralt in the woods. It seems a bit strange. No, it doesn't. What were they talking about? Oh, some posh problems of the rich folk. Too much free time's bad for the Ed. A future his royal highness kept whining about wenches and all things. Are they all empty-headed or boring to talk to? The prince was discussing women? That he was. Very unclean of him, if you ask me. I'm foolish, too. Who cares if the bird's dumb or dull? That's not what I want from me, my wenches. From me wenches? Yes, wonderful. No matter the subject, please. What do they speak of? The captain said something about rules. I just didn't hear that part with my head spinning and the water shimming so loud. I don't know what they meant, but the prince was mighty happy and said something about the ball. The grand ball. He's got some idea that royally empty head of his. I heard because it's of them crowns. Very bad for the ad. It's because of them crowns. Anyway, there's a new idea that he liked. The Grand Royal Ball where the future queen is to be chosen by the prince? Yes, I know of it. Just tell me about the prince and his idea. Why is he so happy about it? Just about masks. Making the ladies, making, making the lassies wear them. You mean a mask ball? A masquerade? I didn't know the rich birds were so horrid. I don't think it's because of that. Did he say why the masks are so important to him? Something to do with the elders. The families? Lots of lord and ladies wait waiting to trade their daughters and only one prince. Too much competition is bad for business and tempers. 
So he's trying to dodge accusations. Yeah, accusations of being biased. Clever. Hi. I knew that. I don't know what's wrong with seeing a nice face though. And what the bird's got a pimple between her eyes. Won't well, notice nothing with masks and such, unless you wanted to ogle like herbs. Ooh, a bit on the nasty side, nobles. They need <laughs> me auntie me. I don't know what's happening with his voice here. My auntie told me stories, gossip really, about the shenanigans going on between them and nobles in the palace. Stuff that made a confessor blush. Alright, I get the picture. A mask ball, you say? It makes a lot of sense, actually. The prince can pretend he's choosing his bride by judging her most subtle qualities, and there's no way any of the house is accusing him of favouring one over another. Who knows, maybe he isn't really pretending. Perhaps having a choice is what he really wants. Devilish to clever love. Glad you got the smarts to see through that. Save me time having to explain that to you. <laughs> Ball for the noble birds and they can have a chance, no matter how pimply or horrid, make me think of Camosio and her pretty lassies. No, not you. The other wenches. I mean your sisters, your lovely sisters. Think of the old lady who paid kingly coin for a rumour like that. That's all there is to it. You satisfied, love? My dear friend, this isn't even half of the story I wanted to hear. You better get to the more juicy stuff straight away. That's all there is to it. I swear on my auntie's pimples. Uh, well, I don't really think he has any morals, so I'm going to focus on this connection with Carmosa. It's all fine and beautiful what you told me, but there are so many things missing, my friend. Like, why is it so important for Camosa that the ball will be a masquerade? What puzzles me is even more how Camino would be interesting for her in the first place. You would have to know her pretty well to figure that out. This is something to do with your past, doesn't it? You've been working for quite some time, haven't you? Fine, there's one thing. A wee detail. Nothing really. Really? Nothing? Mm -hmm. Kind of wisdom. I knew this room would be worth lots of lady, you know? I know her and what she's like. So you did work for her before. What did you do? I might have given her a hand earlier with the ball love so she could get in. How? The goose and the ducklings weren't exactly invited. The lady asked me to help them. Help them? How? Oh, let's just say it required a bit of quality craftsmanship. You mean you forged invitations for them? Me? Sure, I didn't. Me town's known folks with talents of their own. I got them invitations from a friend. Reckon the old lady's a bit dim, and she thought nobody noticed she got him with fake papers. But hey, who is me, humble person, to doubt a noble lady in a way of spending money? And that's how you learned how important the ball was for her. So when you heard about the masquerade, you told her about that as well. As you said, she could get into the ball with fake papers, but she would risk getting recognised. Not so much if it's masked ball. And why this information was... Well, um, that's why this information was worth so much to her. I see. It's only a wee job. A nil. Only an actualist book forgot all about it, eh? So this means she could really be in, actually be in deep trouble. Incredible. Camoso ordered a forgery. This could be my chance. Oi lassie, you've been listening. Can I go now? A man can only handle so many stressful events in one day, you realise. This be my leverage. What? Oh yes. You can do what you wish. You already helped me a lot. Oh Camoso, the secrets really are your greatest weakness. Can you imagine? Camoso would help that minor detail from us all. Who would have thought a friend was such an evil business person? He shall get around. Yes, let's just concentrate on the attitude of the unimportant guy. The big problem, potential scandal, is not going anywhere anyhow. I'm sorry, Sintas, it's just a big surprise to me, as well as information of some consequence. He's just a vagabond, you see, and everyone recognises him as one. And I've hired him numerous times, always for some minor, menial task. And yet here he is, a sparkling potential criminal mastermind, and who would have... To buy his concentrate! What is the subject of this conversation? Oh, this is hard, um, not him then? Very good. Why are you trying to be so controlling, Cinder? See if you can do it if you try hard enough, but you're so mean. Alright, back to the main point. What do you want with this newly acquired information? I have no idea yet. Do you think this could get Camosa into prison? Is this what you want? Shut up. I'm not sure yet. I'm just weighing my options. Well, in that case, it definitely could be used against her, but it, would it suffice? I'm not so sure. Do you think I should try and get her arrested? You should be the one to make this decision. Just as it will be you to experience its consequences. Would you succeed? What would happen to the house if you did? Those are just some of the factors you should take into consideration. Take your time to think it over. That actually sounds very wise, not entirely unhelpful. 
Thank you. I guess I'll go for a walk around the city and think about it. Sounds like a pleasant idea. Would you like some company? Thank you, but I think I'll stick to your advice. Of course. I suppose you deserve some time to yourself to think and discover what it is you really want. I'm sorry, I did not want to intrude. It also would be a bit mean saying, I oh, know Sophia, I'm going off for myself and I'm walking around with Tobias. Thank you for your offer, I just want to take a solitary walk. Well, if you need any support, do you know where to find me? Thank you, Tobias. See you soon. It's astonishing what a simple walk can do to one's spirits. If I'm going to miss the freedom to do something, then above all else, it's going to be the freedom to wander about whenever I please. When I walk with no specific goal, no destination, I can just switch off and observe my thoughts jumping into their little drawers. With each step, I can feel my muscles relaxing. And storming through the market has its moments too. I saw the most gorgeous shoes. Not that I can ever afford them. They were crazily expensive. I get that they were important from the Easter lands, but at that price they should be made of diamonds and dragon skin. Who buy something like that? I mean, I know I would if I could, but that's just beside the point, right? Oh, forget about it. No reason to dwell on such things. I still haven't decided what to do with my newly gained knowledge. Everything about this business screams that I should use it as leverage, but I just don't know how. Not yet. At least it gives me some space. Some secure distance from Kamosa, knowing that I knew one about one of her precious secrets. Summer sunset. I should be getting back home. So long, freedom. It was a pleasure. I hope to see you soon. Maybe you can come visit me sometime. Or at least write. Okay, that is all we have time for for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.